another one of our weekly videos. This week it's all about the Hayachi Pole Saw. I know, the first pole saw we're talking about, but it's pretty exciting. Um, pretty new attachments to add to it, as you can probably not tell because the screen lens. <laughs> kind of out of shot. Yeah. <laughs> we'll show you later. <laughs> but we will be discussing about the new lopper, the ratchet lopper that attaches to your Hayachi Pole Saw if you have one at home, but if you are looking for one, this is an exciting day for you because you're learning all about the Hayachi. <laughs> so, we're starting off with the Lopper. So, you need that? Okay, so as Shanae mentioned today, it's all about the Hayachi Pole Saw. Now, Silky have, pretty should have added this up before we did this video. They have a Longboy, Forester, Zubat, Hayate, Hayachi, Todoku. Um, Am I missing any? Nope, I think that's it. Oh, I think that's it. Yep, done the Zubat. So that's six. Sorry if I got it wrong, but we've at least six we can think of. Different pole saws. And you might think, well, too daunting, how do I know which is which? So that's why we sort of thought we'll do a few videos, break it down for you, and today's all about the Hayachi. So I kind of put it in line number two. Hayate being number one, Hayachi number two, and then we go down with the others. Reason being is, uh, I say number two as in strength. So your Hayate, which is that yellow, sort of bigger pole saw, that one's our strongest, and then this one is the next step down. So still very strong, still um, a great pole saw to use commercially, mm -hmm. but a little bit lighter. So there's sort of pros and cons. Strength gives you um, strength. Uh, <laughs> <but> <laughs> <laughs> so the Hayate is good if you guys are rough on your gear and you just throw yes. it around and it's just, it is what it is. But then you have the Hayachi, which is, the pole is in my way. <laughs> Two poles. I'm gonna hold mine so I give myself a bit more space. But the great thing about the Hayachi is while well, it does have that extra length, not as big as the Hayate 7.7, .7, but it does come in a 6.3, which at your height can reach um, higher, almost yeah. seven. So happy yeah. days. So the Hayachi, which is the one we're talking about today, the black handle pole saw, used to be their commercial, as in their silky saws, commercial pole saw. So that's what you would do. <laughs> So if, you, um, uh, if you're a tree lopper, an arborist, a landscape maintenance person, that would be the pole saw that you would pick. And its maximum height, as Sinead said, is a 6.3. Now, this pole saw comes in three different options. Um, 3.7, I think. 3.7, 4.9. Yes. And then the 6.3. So three options of length, and they're all telescopic. So the one I'm holding, I'm going to put it on an angle because you probably can't fully see it in the shot. So this is a 3.7 meter pole saw, yes, and Shanae has... The 6.3! Yeah, so you can see together they're quite similar in length. It's just, you can see the, the 3.7 has one clamp housing, whereas the 6.3 has three, which means there's three additional poles, or two additional poles, should we say, yeah, in this one, opposed to this one here. So the one in between, which is a 4.9, that will have two of these clamp housings, so it will sort of finish here, opposed to there. So telescopic, they all go obviously much longer to reach their maximum length, which is 6.3 in this case and 3.7 in this case. So as I said, they were the commercial pole saw, but then as Sinead sort of hinted on, because of the lovely people in Australia, and also the conditions, like we, we hassle everyone quite often going, oh, Australians are so rough and we wreck everything and all this sort of stuff, which is true, you do. But just having fun. <laughs> yeah. But we do have some of the harshest conditions in the world. So what we're cutting is often quite dense hardwood. The access we have isn't always great. Um, and the conditions we work on aren't always ideal. So that's also why our gear sort of gets roughed up a bit more than some other countries. But because of that, um, the company that makes these products, which is Silky Japan, they got quite upset with us ordering lots and lots of parts. And they sort of said to us one day, what is going on? Why are you needing all these parts? And we said, oh, well, you know, they." They drop them, or they drive over them, or they get caught, branches hit them, yada yada, all these things happen. So they went back and they tried to address all of these issues and make a pole saw that would cope with all of these things. And that's where the yellow version of this came in, which is called a Hayate. So the upside is it's much stronger, but the downside is it's much heavier and it also costs a bit more. So if you're a home gardener, or if you own your own business and you're an arborist, and you look after your gear, you don't drop it, ooh, you don't make holes in the roof, but you don't drop it on the ground after you've been using it. You don't drive over it. You, you strategically cut your branches so they're not going to swing back and land on the pole. Um, you don't let these clamps, you know, don't leave them open so they rip on branches. Then 
You have no need to buy the yellow one. The black one, the high archie, is absolutely perfect for you and great. And as I said, lighter and a bit cheaper. So that's great. So you can use this pole saw commercially, but you can also use it as a home user as well. So let's talk about why and what's so great about it and how you use it. So um, when you get it, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you this one here. I'm gonna move it at the front of the table. Hopefully that helps. Okay, so. This has um, a double locking system, so I don't know if you can still see it. It's way this in her face. Um, this one here is a lever that you open and close. And what happens when you close it is in here is a, a rectangular piece of black plastic. And when you close that, it squeezes that against this aluminium pole and holds it really, really tight. So that's one way of locking it. And then the other way is this button here. So this pops out obviously through the pole it's sitting in and holds those two poles secure and nice and tight. Now, you must be careful though, this, this button is made out of a hard steel, whereas the pole is made out of an aluminium, which makes it really light. But with these two rubbing up against each other, you can end up stretching this hole. So with the clamp down, that's not a problem. But if you leave that lever open, then this is going to have no support and you're going to end up wriggling that hole and it'll get bigger and bigger and it won't work properly anymore. So make sure you always close that lever when you use the pole saw. And that way this area's got support. Now over time, if you find that if you use the blade quite aggressively, which you don't need to do, but it does happen sometimes, um, you might end up stretching that bit of rectangular plastic I was talking about before. So if you find that when you're opening and closing this, it doesn't feel tight and firm anymore, then just give us a call, jump on the website, go to one of our dealers, um, and order just that little piece of plastic. It's, it doesn't cost very much at all but it'll tighten that up again so that you're going to protect this because what is more costly is getting a new pole so you don't want to have to replace the pole just that little plastic bit if it's stretched out of it uh, so that's how the locking system works now the other really neat important thing with these pole saws is the shape of the the pole this is an oval which gives it really really good strength um, sometimes when they're other shapes and you extend them particularly to heights like four five six seven eight meters they, they tend to bend and it's like a fishing rod. So you're sort of throwing your pulsar into the tree and hoping it gets to the spot you want rather than comfortably and accurately positioning it where you want to cut. So these being oval have great rigidity and they're really quite firm and they hold their shape really well. So it's much easier to move them around a tree and get accurate cutting. So that's why they have this oval shape. Um, the other thing is the handle. Just try not to touch now. So <laughs> the handle here. <laughs> Is, um, is the same special gum rubber that we talk about a lot in our videos. Patent to silky, so you can't get it with any other pulse or a hand saw. Absorbs vibration, so again, very comfortable on the hands, less fatigue. Um, grippy, so you don't slip on it. Uh, just really, really nice and comfortable to use. And then I'm gonna tilt this on the ground. And hopefully you can see this area here. They put like a big rubber stopper on the end. And this is to stop you jarring and vibrating all of those connectors we were looking at before. Because when you finish using it, people have a tendency, oh, it's not on the ground when you're using it, so it's sort of out like so, but normally in the ear, but the roof won't let us do that. Um, and then they just sort of let it slide, slide through their fingers and then bang onto the ground. And what that does is it sort of, you know, puts pressure on all those joints. So by putting a rubber shock absorber on the bottom, it absorbs some of that pressure. Now they're not telling you to smash it onto the ground every time you use it, but it just means that if you do do that sometimes accidentally, uh, you're going to have less chance of damaging the pole saw. So they put that precaution on there for you as well. So the great thing about the High Archie blade, it has a sickle and a hook at the end. So the sickle is great for cutting like small little branches or thick bark, um, just when you're up in the... Um, Pruning up above, you can just little little jabs, um, just a, that are too flimsy for this sort to actually cut. And then also has the hooks. The hook is great for when you are cutting through and push, um, pulling through. Sorry, it will stop you from stop the blade from falling straight out of the cut. So it's a little bit difficult <laughs> when you pull it out and try to find your cut again. So this hook is great for cutting that. Um, the great, it's, it's great for giving you confidence that you're not going to pull yes. through the cut. So it just grabs on when, when you're cutting. So use that full length of the blade. Yeah. yeah. Um, also it has a four retsamy teeth. So the four retsamy is a um, faster cutting, aggressive blade. Um, the great thing about this two size, it is not too big either. So if you have a large four retsamy tooth, it is 
just a little bit too, too aggressive and too, yeah it grabs onto small stuff so only good for big big stuff yeah so this one is great so for the size of the teeth as well especially being four it's really fast aggressive it is for palm fronds as well it can cut fibrous things with ease smaller branches um, but also big branches as well so this is a 390 blade so like always make sure you use the full length of the blade not just this little section yeah <laughs> a cool tip actually is when you use this for the first time um, cut whatever it is you're cutting then bring the pole saw down and actually feel the side of the blade not the teeth the, the safe side this side <laughs> yeah. and you'll feel where the sap is and quite often people will only have actually used like this portion of the blade so you want to get the tip to touch whatever it is you're cutting and because it's a pull only um, you would start your cut here pull the blade and try and get that to touch it so it's a very gentle action what were you saying before it was like Shanae? how do um, you use it? totally forgot it's just like a cool. window like if you see yeah, like a window cleaner. Cleaner. <laughs> yeah. so you just let like a window cleaner you just let it glide you just don't put all your bicep muscles as much as it looks very impressive to the ladies and the girls <laughs> um, <laughs> girl, yeah, yeah. ladies oh, ladies of the guys sorry <laughs> um yeah you just let it glide through the window like a window cleaner but Glide, glide through like a window cleaner does. Actually, it's the rocking act. And she wants me to do it through windows. I'm sure it will cut the glass. You shouldn't be so popular. This is why we have you, Nina. She's <laughs> always saving me. She's always good at fun tips. <laughs> so, yeah, rocking action. So, a little rocking action. So, you let her hold it so you just don't use all your bicep muscles, but you just let it glide. I'm probably out of shot, but just let it glide. <laughs> so, where should the pressure not be? So the pressure should not be on the blade, so you can't... On which? On where? On the teeth, sorry. The teeth. So you, if you put too much pressure on the teeth, it would just, because they're so sharp, it will grip and it will hold on. So it's like tugging with something. Yeah. Like a dog trying to, you're trying to get a little <laughs> toy off them. It's just a... Yeah, okay, <laughs> description. <laughs> you can't win sometimes if they hold on real tight. The same with Silky Saw's teeth. So if you push too hard and the teeth grip too hard it's going to be just the pain in the bum to just try to rip through so just let it glide and then the, like a dog the dog will give its toy back <laughs> <laughs> you may have seen it before but the Hayachi has a longer blade now so it's available in a 48 centimeter blade opposed to a 39 centimeter blade um, because it's red it goes faster <laughs> only kidding but no really it does <laughs> <laughs> Having a longer blade on a saw does make the saw go faster because you have that more teeth, more reach to get through the whole branch as well. The great thing and the unique thing about this Hayachi it has a detachable sickle. So it, the sickle is uh, detachable, easy peasy. And I'm going to demonstrate on this plant as well. Is that when you do have the sickle, it when you're starting the cut at the handle, because all silky saws, especially pole saws, especially pole saws, are pull stroke only. So you start your cut and just let it glide through. You start your cut again and let it glide through. And when you do have a bigger branch than so the bonsai fake plant, <laughs> <laughs> having an attachable sickle as well will give you that few little bits of extra centimeters. Well, it'll um, give you the width of the branch you cut it. So yeah, like the go. bonsai she's got there. <laughs> Um, what do you reckon, like, I don't know, 15 centimetres, 10 centimetres, no, 10, 10, 15, something like that. So you're losing that much of the blade because the sickle prevents you from using those first 10, 15 centimetres of teeth? Yes. No? Ha, you need a my hero. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll quickly take this off, this blade off, cover, so you can, without cutting all my fingers. It's kind of cool that covers, it's got a handle for carrying. Yeah, so you can carry it around everywhere, but yeah, me and Yunita are in love with this. Um, person for it, so thank you, Japan. <laughs> um, so you can tell it has the hook at the fox, same with the other. <laughs> top. It has a hook at the top. <laughs> Let me get, I'll explain the hook fox, it's not just an imaginary word. <laughs> we'll talk about the hook fox later. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so it has a hook at the end, so it's great for cutting those twigs, vines, but it also helps to prevent the Complete blade falling straight out of the cut. So it has the hook at the end, great for that. Sickle, detachable sickle, it, you can keep it on, you can keep it off. Um, easy peasy, 48 centimeter blade, super nice um, scabbard as well, and it comes with extra screws as well. So that's the Hi Archie 480 blade complete. Hey, cool. <clears throat>
Cool. So that's the high up sheet. As we mentioned before, you've got three pole options and now you've got two blade options as well. Um, the other options you have with a high art sheet is the hook fox and the lopper. So this one here you can see we've got the lopper on and I'm going to show you that not on the pole but this is how it attaches. So cuts on the side and that's why we've attached it with your clamps at the top because this is where you're going to be opening and closing them to extend and, and break down your pole saw. So it's always best we find to have the blade on the other side because this is where you're going to be using the rope as well. So I'm going to put this to the side for a second and then I'm going to show you the lopper on its own. So we actually have two options with the lopper. Now this is not a silky product. This is made by a different company but it fits on the Hayachi pole saw. So great lopper um, but just so you know not made by Silky Saws Japan, made by a different company. Um, the neat thing with this lopper is it's ratchet. So one of the dramas with a lopper um, when you're dealing with a pole saw situation is trying to have something work at such a high distance, four meters, five meters, six meters, it's challenging because you've got to be quite accurate with these. So one great thing is the space is quite large here, it's quite a big hole, um, so a bit easier to get onto what you're cutting and being the parrot beak shape, it allows it to be much easier for you to hook on to the branch you want to cut and therefore have it in the right place when you get to the cutting. Um, but with the ratchet, it's these, these things here. So ordinarily when you're in the pulse or using situation, this is hanging on the branch or you know balancing there and your arms are put at good use because it's hard to do this. Um, then you've got to pull this, this rope to get it to cut. Now most loppers you have to pull, 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 pull and we're talking holding all the way down here. So your arms are never long enough to actually pull that all the way through to cut. So you'll find people are like wrapping it around their arm which is cutting off the blood circulation or you might have been where you've tied knots all along it so you can sort of do some kung fu move where you quickly grab the next rope, the next knot to pull it and pull it until you get that to cut through. So with this it's quite cool being ratchet. As soon as that blade feels a bit of pressure and resistance it will lock into place and all you need to do as soon as you feel that is release release that rope and you'll notice it will lock into the next section of the ratchet up there. don't know which side you can see it better on. Then you pull again until you, it, you feel a little bit of resistance and again release that rope and whoop, that rope and it will lock into the second setting. So again, don't know if you can see it. So there's actually three settings there. So it means you're just out. You're just <laughs> you're just briefly pulling on this rather than doing these huge long pulls. So really, really handy, really important. And if any one of you, any of you out there have this, please try and use it that way because we've just found out recently that a lot of people don't realise in Australia that these are a ratchet system and don't know that you can stop pulling, push it back up again, pull again, push it back up again, pull again. So much easier to use it like this, so fast, but this is great. You'll love it and it's an attachment for that high archie pole saw. I'm um, always nervous when I demonstrate these things because I, you know, I get so involved with chatting I wonder if I'm going to cut my fingers off while I do it. <laughs> and I was at a garden show years ago and uh, this poor other salesperson, not on our table but on somebody else's, was selling secateurs and he was demonstrating to a lady how to use them and she wanted to have a turn so he passed her the secateurs and then sort of handed this branch across but his poor little finger was like this and she just chomped straight through the branch and the finger and the top of the finger fell onto the desk and she went, oh, no, I don't really like it. And put it down and walked off. I saw this poor guy standing there, blood dripping, finger no longer as long as it used to be. I, at the least she could have done is brought it. So if you come in here and I demonstrate, you chop my finger off, you have to buy it. <laughs> anyway, it's high point. Um, <laughs> so that is the lot where it's great. Don't cut your fingers off, be careful. <laughs> Sinead, what box? Mine's a safe option. <laughs> this one will not um, cut your fingers off. <laughs> unless you put it on one. <laughs> Um, so this is the hook fox. So it's a little hook that attaches to all your pole saws as well. It has four different screws because it's um, each pole saw would have a different attachment. Yeah, so I think six to pole saws we said before. Six pole saws, yes, yeah. with four screws. So this one is attached um, through the Hayachi is attached through here, and it fits as you can probably not see through here. It's a great thing about um, these hook fox. It's a like a movering mechanism as well. So if you have a palm frond, palm fronds that are dead, fallen, um, or you have cut through a palm frond and it hasn't quite um, reached to the floor yet, <laughs> and it's still hanging on <laughs> through little 
a few little threads. Uh, having a little hook box saves you from trying to find that cut again, so you try to rip it through. Hook box, rip it, drag it. Uh, another thing about the hook fox as well is that if you are an arborist, you're up a tree and there's a jammed chainsaw, saves you from a guy heading you up another chainsaw um, or anything <laughs> like to release the bar. <laughs> to release the bar, having just a little handy pole saw, large pole saw with hook fox on it so you can just help. So the ground you can lift the branch and release the pressure to, to take the bar out. Yeah, cool. yeah. Yay. So that's another great thing. Um, also, if you are a landscaper or you are doing a home job and you have a truck out the back as well, from the front <laughs> heading to the back, <laughs> or any of those, and you have um, and there's like a surface wire that's too low, not pole, um, not, not power line, no, 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 big no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Only surface wires, wires you can help, um, you can use the hook fox to just reach lift it up, up so lift it up and so the truck doesn't hook on it. So that's the hook box, it takes, it's easy peasy to attach on, I did it last week and accidentally put it on the wrong way so always make sure that you have the hook fox facing opposite the um, blade. blade as well because you do not want to break that blade um, a lot of people think using a blade to just get rid of those little um, dead trees that are in the fronds front front this will break the blade what break blade buy a new one no <laughs> that is really expensive you do not want to buy always constantly have to buy new replacement blades they are over a hundred dollars the hook fox is only forty four dollars so you rather spend forty four dollars again if you accidentally break that which is very unlikely <laughs> if you're a genius if you do <laughs> um so yes always having the hook fox will save you money and will save you time and no and also moving blades. your ropes a lot of people try and use the blade to move their ropes around and yes. the ropes are expensive so again the blade will cut a rope really easily and a little nick in a rope will um will make basically it make it dangerous so yeah. use the hook fox for that instead and it works far better as well yeah so that's yeah. a little hook fox great little tool to have um and then just set your parcel yeah that's it. So everything is replaceable, so if you do damage anything, you can get any part of it separately. Um, attachments options, you've got the hook fox for manoeuvring, you've got the lopper for your tip pruning, mm -hmm. and you've got the two options of blade depending on how big and how fast you want to cut. Yes. And it's a brilliant saw, you will love it. Oh, and the last thing is, um, it is sharpenable, so both of the blades, you can sharpen them if you want to. Yes. You need a diamond shape file to do that. Um, it's a special file we get from Japan, shaped like a diamond, and so that's what you use to sharpen them. Only the tips of the teeth the first three times, and we've got a video on YouTube that you can check out that tells you how to do that. Yeah, and all that will be in the description below, so have a look if you are wanting to sharpen your silky saw. Um, Rick has made a video for that. So when, clean, when it comes to cleaning your silky saw as well, we, we suggest uh, the brush to make sure the teeth are all out, using the easy spray as well, just to help get rid of the sap, because the build up of sap will rust it. Get a rag, clean out the um, blades Excess. of your teeth. You need to have a video up on YouTube, link will be in our description below, how to clean your silky saw and a lanolin um, spray as well, just to give it a protective coating, and you have a lifelong blade, almost. So, excellent. So that's it for the Hayashi. <laughs> Last but not least before we go, we'll talk about the promotion. <laughs> so the promotion for this month is we're giving away key rings. Super cool, super sharp. <laughs> no, we'll add another key video. <laughs> Sorry, we'll add another video if you need a cutting. The apple wizard there. That oh, yeah, no, not a video, photo. Video photo. photo. Yeah, so, I ate the apple. Sorry. Sorry, to, Sorry. Like, Sorry to give photo. you a photo. <laughs> 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 um, so on our website, www arbalab.com.au just type in a review of one of your about your favorite saw yes yeah, so each um, product you can review it so yeah. any product that you like throw a review on and then we will with your review we will send you a key ring so no you said only 10 people the first oh, 10 yes. reviews yeah sorry 10 first 10 people <laughs> sorry we don't have that many key rings and they're pretty special <laughs> and you have to be in australia so sorry yes. if you're overseas only for Australian residents. <laughs> you need to says all the important stuff. <laughs> so the first 10 reviews put on our website this week. Uh, we'll get a hearing. So, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Great. Well, thanks for watching and we'll see you next week. See ya.